Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are starting with the Ashtak Varga series and Ashtak Varga is very important if you want to know which transits will affect you, how and which dashas will activate which houses, okay, apart from the houses that it signifies in a good or in a challenging way either ways so you may be thinking what is all this well imagine yourself you are going to a country maybe you are from america and you go to india okay and then you have some preconceived notions about india that india is like this or india is like that maybe north india is like this south india is like that so then suppose you land up in Mumbai International Airport. So then what happens? You kind of start figuring out where I should go, what I should do, or how much do you want to go to a particular place. Okay. So that's exactly what Astagvarga is. So here you see these planets, they are giving certain points. Okay. And the points are going to certain houses. Okay. So here when you see the number one, it is not the first house. It is the sign Aries. So which means this sixth house because this ascendant is in Scorpio. So for Scorpio, Aries is the sixth house. So this means... Sun is giving 7 points to the 6th house. So it's like saying uh, Sun wants to quite go there. Why? Because he is contributing uh, the maximum points from his own pocket. You see here, Sun is contributing 7, 3, 5, 3 like this, this row which you see. This is a contribution towards all the houses. Okay. So where is the maximum contribution? Maximum contribution is in the 6th house. So this is how Ashtakvarga works. Okay. Alright. So now some base for this video. So recently one of my uh, friends, he called me and he asked me that one of his astrologers who he contacted from YouTube for a consultation, he told him that uh, he should not get married. Okay. And I asked him why did he say like that? Because he said uh, his Ashtag Varga points of the 7th house were very less. Okay. Only 19 points. And because of that, the astrologer told him that if you marry, uh, you will be divorced or your spouse will die. All right. So these kind of things they tell to somebody who is wanting to get married. And uh, then he was very depressed, of course. And then he called me and said, uh, wh what about my chart, my Ashtak Varga, the seventh, seventh house is ruined. So should I get married? If I don't get married, what I will do? If I get married, maybe my uh, wife dies. What do you think of it? <clears throat> so then I looked at his chart. I looked at his Ashtak Varga and I said, don't worry, you will get married and you will live very happily. And then he was surprised. Why did I say like that? And then I explained him why. So today something similar I am going to do in this video. So basically what happens is in YouTube, uh, there's this uh, big mis uh, miscommunication or I would say false communication from many astrologers that any house <coughs> sorry which has less than 28 ashtak varga points because that 28 is almost like average if you calculate the total of all the points and divide it by 12 so it comes to around uh, 28 near about so they have made made some rules where they say that okay if you have 28 the house is okay so now what does it mean to say the house is okay there is no definition for okay then they say that if it is less than 28, it is bad. But bad in which area? That they will not tell. If it is above 28, then it is good. But good where? Good for what? Maybe good for nothing sometimes. 
so now the question is is it true well let us see in this person's case okay so today you will see how to actually use Ashtabhaga, not just blindly like, oh, uh, so for example, somebody has Rahu in seven, so he will marry a foreigner girl. It's not a blanket statement like that, okay? So everywhere, in every horoscope, you will see some houses have too many points uh, and some houses have very few points. So here, if you see, the eighth house has 37 points. So it's it's the maximum you see and the 12th house has 23 points and this 4th house has 22 points <clears throat> and the 9th house has 25 points so that means the 9th house is also pretty weak according to that uh, definition because it's less than 28 right but you will be surprised to know that this person is very, 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 very spiritual and he is very committed and he is very elevated spiritually. Well, now you may be wondering how in the universe that's possible because his ninth house has less than 28 points, okay? And let me tell you another thing. This person is now married <clears throat> and after his marriage, he has become 10 times more spiritual. So you may be wondering how. So now you may be thinking... Oh, yeah, of course, you know, his seventh house has 31 points, you know, it's like a great house for him. So maybe he became more spiritual because of his marriage, because his marriage house has 31 points. Yes, that's what you are thinking, right? Well, uh, that's not the answer why. Just because somebody is getting married, it doesn't mean he becomes more spiritual. That's not necessary. In fact, most of the times the opposite happens, okay? The thing here is, you have to check the points which individual planets are giving and then you have to check is the agenda of that house matching with these points okay i mean the agenda of that planet who is giving these points to that house is it matching or not <clears throat> so for example if you see the seventh house just look at the seventh house so the seventh house has 31 points so now, which sign is there in the second house? It's number two, so Taurus. So go to this, okay? So as I said, this two is not second house. This two is the sign Taurus, which is in the seventh house. So you see here, 31, and here is 31. So now, when Venus Dasha gets activated, because two is ruled by uh, Venus, which is Taurus. So uh, this person got married during Venus Antar Dasha. <clears throat> so now you see what's happening if you go to this table number two you will see sun is contributing three points so now what is sun here sun is the 10th lord okay so that means the 10th lord is not contributing quite much to the marriage okay so the, what, what does this mean this means that the person's career will not have a big impact on the marriage. Okay, so what does this mean? It, it, it can mean many things. It can mean that the person does not have to have a very big, uh, well, well reputed job or something to get married. Okay, or it can mean that even if he doesn't have a job, uh, his marriage will still work. Now, of course, this is not zero here. This is three points, which is still reasonably uh, considerate. But this is not like 7 here, which sun is giving, you see. So therefore, we can conclude that his job will not be a very big issue for getting married. Okay, now, but if sun was contributing 7, then my God, this would have been a very serious issue. Then I would have told him that, please make sure you have a good, stable, sustained income for some time. Only then think of marriage. But here now, it's not a problem, you see. Now you see the game. Moon is contributing 7. Maximum moon is contributing. Just see this row of moon. You see 3, 7, 5, 2, 4 like this. So now moon is contributing maximum to the 7th house. And we, who is moon here? Moon is the lord of the ninth house. So the ninth lord is contributing maximum to the 7th house. So it's like saying... The ninth lord is waiting when this person will get married and he will be he will drown him in spirituality. 
okay because that's what is the job of the ninth lord so now you understand why after getting married he became uh, much more spiritual this is the reason okay now you see mars is giving him three points who is mars here mars is the sixth lord it is also the lagna lord is the sixth lord so now sixth lord can break the marriage at times sixth lord is the indicator of divorce so that means how much is mars contributing see mars has contributed six points to capricorn okay here but if you talk of taurus mars is barely contributing three points okay so that means the chances that there are quarrels or disagreements or fights in marriage is very 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 less very less almost next to zero you see here now of course it's three it doesn't mean that it's zero but i hope you understand what i mean okay now just check who is the next mercury is contributing three points and you see here mercury contributes six to aries then six to gemini six to cancer quite quite some points so three is again decent for mercury so that means in his marriage mercury will not be a very big deciding factor so now mercury rules which houses mercury is the eighth lord and he's also the 11th lord okay so now suppose mercury was contributing seven points here instead of moon so then what i would say then i would say after getting married his 11th house would shoot up which means his income or his uh, friend circle would increase okay 10 times 20 times but now not too much of an impact now you see jupiter jupiter is again contributing seven points this is insane you see that moon is contributing seven jupiter is contributing seven and jupiter is the natural significator of spirituality and therefore the ninth lord which is moon and jupiter is contributing phenomenally that is why this person's spirituality has increased multifold times after his marriage now <clears throat> Jupiter is which lord? Jupiter is the lord of the second and the fifth. So that means his existing family and his children will have a very strong say on marriage, his marriage. Okay. So that means having children is very important for this person. So anything that goes wrong with his children because Jupiter is the fifth lord will also have an effect on his marriage. Yes, because Jupiter is contributing huge. He is contributing huge, massive, seven points. And then let's check Venus. Venus is four. Venus is the seventh lord itself. Okay. And Venus is the twelfth lord itself. So Venus is contributing four. That is still uh, good enough, decent. Uh, not very high, not very low. So now suppose instead of this Jupiter and Moon, uh, Venus would contribute 7 points. Then what I would tell him? I would tell him that, look, the Mool Trikon Rashi of Venus is in the 12th house. That means unless you travel abroad, you will not get married. But now does he need to travel abroad to get married? Uh, well, it's not mandatory because 4 is like average. Okay. But yeah, four is still important. So uh, if he would have gone to a different place, it would have been a bit easier for him to get married. Okay. Now you check Saturn. Saturn, this there comes the interesting thing, you see. Saturn is what? Contributing four points. Okay. So Saturn is the fourth lord. Fourth lord is contributing four points and twelfth lord Venus is contributing same four points. Fourth lord can show uh, things that that are near to your place so that means now to get married he <clears throat> his 12th lord is also contributing the equal points as his fourth lord so in a way either he stays in his homeland or goes abroad it doesn't matter because both the ways uh, they are having the same effects now suppose saturn would have six here just like it has six in gemini it would have six here okay then what i would suggest this person i would suggest this person that 
you must find somebody from your own place from your living place your homeland okay because that is having a very strong say or the mother will have a very strong say in deciding your marriage okay and saturn is also the lord of the third house so i could also say uh, that the girl could be near to your place but maybe you have to do some short distance travel maybe you could meet her during a journey okay so this is how you see which are the primary contributors to his married life so moon and jupiter are maximum so that means jupiter second house fifth house so family is very important and children both are very important and spirituality has increased because the ninth lord is contributing seven points insane this is now <clears throat> now look at the ninth house the ninth house has the sign cancer right <clears throat> so that means we will go to number four so you are thinking oh poor fellow you see terrible only 25 points okay now let us try to see what is happening venus is contributing five points and he is the second largest contributor you see and venus is the seventh lord that means after he become he gets married his spirituality will improve so now you see how to activate this house of spirituality just because the points is less it doesn't mean you throw the person out of that house okay but 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 there's something very interesting here you see this mercury mercury is insane here he's contributing six points my god he's maximum you see after venus i mean he he's only before venus i mean so who is mercury now mercury is the lord of the eighth house okay and mercury is the lord of the eleventh so 8th lord is contributing to spirituality this means his 8th lord can show your in-laws so maybe his in-laws are very spiritual can i come to this conclusion well yes his in-laws are very spiritual indeed and his wife is also very spiritual because in the 7th house which is this taurus his 9th lord is contributing so much that means it's like saying the 9th lord wants that he marries a spiritual spouse there you go that's how you see now mercury is also the 11th lord so 11th lord is a very important planet because 11th lord wherever he is throwing maximum points that house he will always have gains irrespective of anything else okay so now the 11th lord mercury is throwing six points to three houses you see one is aries which is his sixth house <clears throat> then the other one is gemini which is the eighth house itself and the other one is the ninth house so that means his sixth house eighth house and the ninth house these areas will always be blessed because he will gain things in life externally and that is why even though he has only i'm being sarcastic here only 25 points he is still so very spiritual okay so now you understand how it is happening now let's go to another house now let us go to his 10th house which is the house of career name fame status so what's happening here his career house has 26 points again by standard typical ways of calculation that's bad okay if i am if i be, behave sarcastically it's terrible okay now let's check what is happening here go to leo number five so go here okay <clears throat> so how much is the 10th lord contributing to his own house four points decent the ninth lord moon is contributing four points that is also decent mars is contributing very less what does this mean mars is contributing very less this means that the person will not be very happy in a job where he has to keep fighting all the time 
because Mars is not giving points in his from his pocket to the 10th house. So that means you have to suggest this person that you should not take a job which where you have to keep fighting all the time. Okay, too much competition, it's not recommended for him. But there is this game changer, you see Mercury. Again, the 11th Lord is contributing 5 points, which is phenomenal. Again, Jupiter is the second Lord of money, he is contributing 5 points. So there you go, the second Lord and the 11th Lord, both the houses of money contributing 5, 5 points. This is fantastic for the 10th house. And now the second layer, you see Jupiter and Mercury, both are contributing 5 and both are teaching planets, education teaching and therefore he is into teaching now, assistant professorship. And he is doing very well. So you may be surprised how his 26 points, you know, giving him such a good career. Well, now you see the 11th Lord and the 2nd Lord. Okay. Let's take any other house. Let us take the 11th house, which is the sign of Virgo number 6. So according to that, it has 30 points, which is very good. Again, you see here. The second Lord Jupiter is contributing 6 points. This is phenomenal. This is insane. So that means his second house, which is the house of money and 11th house, the house of income is telling, whoa, I will shoot it. Look at sun. Sun is contributing 5 points. 10th Lord is contributing 5 points to the 11th house. That is again phenomenal. And Mercury, the 11th Lord himself is contributing 5 points. So you add up. 5, 5 and 6, it is total 16 points, half of the job is done, 16 is more than half of 30. So there you see Jupiter in the 11th house, which is the house of income, which planets are having maximum impact. You see Sun is having 5, Mercury has 5, Jupiter has 6. So the, again Jupiter, Mercury is contributing quite a bit to his finances 11th house okay income so again he's a teacher and because Surya is contributing maximum also I mean five after Jupiter so he is uh, a assistant professor in a government college so there you see how simple this is so now what do what do we need to we need to see so we need to see so suppose this is his 10th house okay this leo so let's go to leo so suppose jupiter mercury would contribute very less maybe they were contributing zero or one because there are places see this to libra there is zero contribution from saturn okay so similarly suppose in leo the contribution from jupiter mercury was one two or zero one like this then we would suggest that better not go towards teaching because that will not help. Now if Sun would contribute 7 and Mars would contribute 7. Then we would say maybe become an army officer. Or give the IPS. Uh, give, give UPSC exam and become an IPS officer. Okay. So this is how you have to use Ashtakvarga. Not just blindly. Oh less than 28. Good. More than 28 is better. It's not like that. So now the last thing I will show you here just check the seventh lord so where is the seventh who is the seventh lord seventh lord is venus just check the row for venus so where is venus contributing maximum you see venus is contributing four four five like this you go six so six is maximum here and he's contributing six in pisces okay so where is pisces pisces is his fifth house so that means children and marriage are again linked. And if you see the fifth Lord Jupiter is also contributing quite a number of points. You know, seven points to his seventh house. So the seventh Lord is contributing six points to the fifth house. And the fifth Lord is contributing seven points to the to this house, to the seventh house. You see. So that means children and marriage are very much interlinked.
okay so that means you have to tell him that if anything goes wrong with your children then your married life may also be disturbed so please take care of your children and also if there is a problem in your marriage your children's life will be very disturbed okay so this is how you have to uh, see which houses are affecting which houses which planets okay and if you see in general his married life 31 points so now you go go here again so so another thing i have seen is just check how much the fiery planets are contributing okay so which means go and check how much is sun and mars contributing sun and mars are only contributing six points okay so this means very less chances of quarrel or ego or ego clashes ego battles because the fire is very low not that low also but uh, quite lower than the other numbers you see all the other numbers are like seven seven four four so suppose instead of jupiter mercury had seven here then what would be your conclusion that mercury is very important in the marriage it means proper communication is very important the moment your communication is gone mis miscommunication misunderstanding your whole married life will go topsy-turvy so that means now you can tell the person which areas you should focus so that your married life improves this is how you have to use astrology not just telling him that oh it is 31 good good uh, great go and keep uh, just go and sleep okay your married life is great but if he asks you that how should i improve my married life so now you tell him see moon and jupiter are contributing maximum okay so that means ninth lord second lord and fifth lord so children your existing family to some extent finances and spirituality very 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 important if you take care of these three areas your married life will be rock solid no discussions no arguments no quarrels apart from the daily uh, problems of course all right so this is how you use ashtak varga and many times people say that oh it's bad to have points in dusthanas okay they say it's terrible so now you take this example mercury uh, he, this is the sign uh, gemini in the eighth house and it has 37 points you see maximum points my god okay so what is happening here too many points but now you check who is contributing what so the 10th lord is contributing 5 ninth lord is contributing 5 lagna lord is contributing 5 sixth lord is also mars is contributing 5 and the eighth lord and the 11th lord mercury is contributing highest i mean including saturn okay so now you see saturn is contributing maximum saturn is the lord of the third house so you have to tell the person please be careful during saturn dasha saturn antar or pratyantar if you take some short distance travel be careful there could be uh, reversals so you may miss the bus or you may miss the train this is only applicable in the dasha all right or be careful uh, in issues related to your mother or property or home land real estate because fourth house shows all this and fourth lord saturn is contributing maximum okay but here is the fun you see mercury is the 11th lord he is also contributing 6 equally that means the conclusion is whatever difficulties this 8th house will have okay this saturn will give ultimately as the 11th lord is also contributing the same he will be able to overcome all his challenges and difficulties all right and because jupiter mercury are contributing 11 points you see here 6 plus 5 he is very much interested in occult knowledge occult studies all right so that is how you know if these 37 points they are good or they are bad
all right so let us just not make a blanket statement that this is good this is bad all right so thank you very much for uh, seeing this video and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and if you want a consultation from me then you can go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him thank you